Bacon has never been my strong point, particularly if it involves a piping bag, but I've always wanted to perfect the macaron, so I'm gonna really take some time today and try and get it right. Now there are two parts to making the shell. One is the paste, the other part is the meringue. So here are my ground almonds, and I've also got some icing sugar. Now I've sifted both of them, but if you want to be really precise, what you can do is grind the two of them together in a food processor and then sift out any lumps. They're going straight into my bowl. And here I've got 65 grams of egg whites. I'm gonna put the recipe in the link so you can follow that, but that's about two medium egg whites. And tip those in. Now this is a stage at which you could add any flavorings. I'm not gonna add any, but I am gonna be using some red food gel just to give it a nice little pink shade. And then just bring that together with a spatula or a wooden spoon. It's gonna make quite a stiff mixture. So that's our paste already. Now to make the meringue, you're gonna need a stand mixer. And of course, one of the really important things when it comes to making a meringue is to make sure that the bowl is really clean, that there isn't any egg yolk in the egg white because any fat will stop them from getting really, really stiff, which is what we want. And we're gonna start by warming together some golden caster sugar and 75 mils of water. And the temperature is really, really crucial. I think probably in the past, that's where I might have gone wrong. What we need it to read is 114 degrees C. Now, while that's starting to happen, I'm just gonna pop egg whites into my mixer. I've got two eggs again, 65 grams. In they go with a pinch of salt. And when it reaches 100 degrees on the thermometer, I'm gonna start the whisking. When it reaches 114, we'll pour in the hot syrup. Now my sugar's at 100 degrees, so I'm gonna pop the eggs on. We just want them to get nice and frothy. And then when it reaches 114, I'll pour in the syrup. At that point, we need to whisk it for at least five minutes until it goes really thick and shiny. Now we're going to mix the meringue into the almond paste a third at a time. Is that the postman or is that children? Why do they have to come in now? Dad has to put our bikes on. First amount of meringue going in. I'm just going to use a metal spoon for this, just to fold it through. Now there's quite a lot of air in that meringue and actually you need to be a little bit more vigorous than you think when it comes to folding it in. Now the second third. I'm just going to add the final meringue now. Now this is what's known as the lava stage and it's meant to flow off the spoon. Now they're too thick nor too runny and the way to test it is to see if you can draw a figure of eight without it breaking. I think that was a perfect figure of eight. Did you see it Robert? Here look quick. Can you see nice. it? And you can absolutely pipe them by eye but I have decided to draw circles on my baking parchment. I've done it for two reasons. One, as a size guide, but also I've got three trays and I want to get 20 on each one. It's gonna help me to space them out evenly as well. Make sure you put them pencil side down and then we're gonna try and see the circles through the paper. I'm gonna just work left to right across the paper and I'm gonna pipe completely vertically, straight down. What we need to do now, and this bit's really important, is really bang the tray. And some people tell you to do it at least four or five times. So pick it up and drop it. And we need to leave those for about 20 minutes. And what happens is the skin forms on the top and that helps them to rise evenly. Now these have had their time and if you just run your finger over the surface, they should feel firm to the touch. They're not at all sticky which means that skin has formed. And also you can see in most cases, the little tips have settled down, which is what we want to see. Now these need to bake for about 15 minutes, but I think it's a really fine line between them having a lovely pink color and then tipping over into peach. So I keep an eye on them, maybe look at them at 13 or 14 minutes just to see how they're getting on, but try not to open the door too early. Now I'm going to sandwich the macaron together with a traditional buttercream. So I've got some softened butter here. Now if you wanted to make a dairy free version, you could by all means just use a dairy free spread. Or you could use a completely different filling like a chocolate ganache maybe. In that goes. And of course macaron are naturally gluten free as well. Now for some icing sugar, tip that in. I'm going to beat this till it's really nice and creamy. Now the mixture is really light and cream and fluffy, so now's the time to add our flavouring. I'm going to be using a little bit of this, which is a raspberry coulis, which will give it some flavour and a little bit of pinkness. Just tip a bit in. So here are the macaron, and there's a little bit of shine to the surface, which is always good to see. They should just come off quite easily. Now for the icing. 
and then just pipe a little swirl. You want that swirl to be slightly smaller than the size of the macaron and then pop another one on top and then just carry on sandwiching them all together. The important thing to remember is that you shouldn't eat them for 24 hours. So put them into an airtight container and put them in the fridge overnight. And what happens is the filling softens the macaron slightly. So you get this creamy center, then a chewy layer, and then finally the lovely crisp outside. So just resist them if you can. Hold on, does mum said you can eat them? <laughs>